All right, we're going to get started. First, I want to thank everyone for coming. My name is State Representative Deborah Hillstrom, um, and I represent the City of Brooklyn Center and parts of Brooklyn Park. And we're here today because most Minnesotans want to do what we can to reduce gun violence in Minnesota. And we've attempted to put together a proposal that has bipartisan support as well as geographic balance. We believe that this is a proposal that can um, bring people together in Minnesota and do, to, in Minnesota to do what we can to improve the background system that we currently have and also to hold felons responsible uh, for the crimes that they commit. Um, it increases penalties for people who illegally possess firearms and it um, also goes a long way to make certain that those with mental health issues who are currently not in the database system that are done by federally licensed uh, firearms dealer background checks, that that data gets into the background system that we need to have there to, to adequately do checks. So with me is uh, Rich Stanek. Uh, he is the sheriff as well as all of these other members, but Rich Stanek will be speaking. He's the uh, sheriff from Hennepin County. Good. Excuse me. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, well, good morning. My name is Rich Stanick, Sheriff in Hennepin County, and I'm here with uh, a, a bipartisan group of uh, both legislators, both the House and the Senate, as well as my friends in the uh, Sheriff's Association representing both uh, Metro as well as Greater uh, Minnesota. Uh, in January, the Minnesota Sheriff's Association stood here at the Capitol with a broad and bipartisan coalition to announce our interest in working in a few key areas as it relates to extreme gun violence in our state and ways to further protect our communities. And what we talked about then, the message I delivered to President Obama during a law enforcement meeting at the White House a few weeks ago, and what our state and national sheriff's associations are saying is the same message that we deliver here today to all of you. And gun ownership is not a privilege, it's a right guaranteed by the Second Amendment. The problem we have is with access. Those who are legally prohibited from owning or possessing a gun should never have access to a gun. And we should be focusing on the access problem and not infringing upon the rights of law-abiding citizens. When we rolled out our reforms in January, we emphasized the need to tighten up Minnesota's existing background check system to carry or purchase guns. Now, this bill is the only bill that does that, and this is why Minnesota sheriffs are supporting it. Now, let me talk just for a minute about the gaps in our existing background check system. Now, my friend Sheriff Jim Olson, now right here, uh, is here, and he can attest to the Oberender case in Carver County. Now, that case, along with a subsequent investigative report by the Star Tribune, outlines the problems with our existing system that need to be fixed. The Star Tribune investigative report found that since 2000, there were 84 people that were found mentally ill and dangerous by the courts through due process, yet were charged subsequently with illegal gun possession. And how can that be, you say? Well, that's a great question. In some cases that the investigative report examined, civil commitments are not being entered into the NICS system. In other cases, the system isn't catching names that are spelled slightly differently. This bill does that. Now we need to ensure all these records both moving forward and reaching back are included in this system and this bill does that. Now never ever should a person who has been deemed mentally ill and dangerous by the courts through due process be allowed to purchase a handgun. A background check is only as good as the data that is put into the system which that check relies on. The counties, district courts in the state all have a role to ensure this information is entered promptly and accurately into the NICS system. And this bill does that. This bill is the only bill that protects Second Amendment rights while strengthening background checks done under existing law. Ensuring those legally prohibited from owning or possessing a gun don't have access to guns. The closing gaps in existing law should be done first before policymakers ever consider expanding background checks. The language in this bill provides important change. It includes a 24-hour and 72-hour timelines by which this data must be entered into the system. We believe this will go a long way in making sure current background checks conducted are reliable, accurate, and complete, which is what the citizens of this state demand and expect. Even though the Star Tribune editorial board agrees in the importance of this legislation as outlined in the March 5th opinion pages, this is the only bill that includes this reform. In addition to ensuring our current background system is working, this bill includes reforms important to law enforcement that we saw in other bills that were heard here at the legislature over the last several weeks. First, it strengthens uh, stronger penalties for straw purchasers. Secondly, it gets tough on violent felons who possess guns illegally with mandatory minimum sentences. If bipartisan support is important in order to get legislation passed, this bill has that. Now, we see that in Congress, as they debate gun bills, Minnesota is no different. Now, here in Minnesota, we can all work together and focus on areas that we can agree and make incremental change. This bill does that. 
You know, I appreciate the leadership of Representative Hillstrom, uh, the other House members, the Senate members who are here. Uh, it's not easy to step forward and take on a piece of legislation like this. But again, what you see in here is a bipartisan, a Democrat, Republican, somewhere in between. Uh, bicameral, House, Senate, uh, standing behind us this morning, hoping that these reforms to Minnesota law will be enacted. Uh, with that, that concludes my comments. We'll be around afterwards for questions. I'm going to turn it over to Representative uh, Tony Cornish for a few words. Well, some of you that uh, know me here in the uh, news media know that some of my statements are uh, fairly controversial and uh, right to the point. Today, I'm not here for that. Today, I'm here to be kind of a, a peacemaker. And not a cult peacemaker, but a peacemaker amongst the legislators to bring everybody together. I want to thank Representative Hillstrom for her leadership and being the chief author and allowing me to be the co-author. I want to thank uh, represent, or, uh, Sheriff Stanick, a former representative, and my House and uh, Senate members here, both uh, GOP and DFL. I hope that real, you realize that looking over the crowd here, this is truly a bipartisan effort. I'd also like to thank the NRA and the Gun Owners Alliance of Gokra here in the cities uh, for helping along in this endeavor. The, uh, what this bill is, is a uh, uh, meeting of the minds and good legislation. There's nothing in here that any gun owners have to fear about their rights. And what we came to do here today is not beat up on any party or any legislator or any bill. We came to talk about this bill, which is bipartisan. And we wanted to finally get a bill that concentrated on the criminal and access to guns rather than anything else. And I think we did it with this bill, and I expect it to succeed. And uh, I think it's a, it's a good effort. And uh, hopefully you'll realize that uh, with all the people involved here and the support you see in 73 authors and co-authors on this, that uh, we're really serious about this. And uh, it's not just for show. We want to actually make a difference and uh, reduce crime and put the onus where it belongs on the criminal instead of the citizen. So with that, uh, the members here did a good job of covering the information. And I'm going to turn it back to uh, Representative Hillston for any questions. Thank you. Well, again, I want to thank everyone for coming, and we will ask, uh, take questions. Do you have a hearing on this? Um, well, the bill will be introduced today, of course, then I'll be putting in a hearing request, just as I do with any other bill, and uh, hope that we get a hearing. A week and a half, are you optimistic you can meet deadline? Um, well, at this point in time in the legislative session, when you have a, a group of bipartisan le legislators uh, with uh, more than 70 authors, you hope that we can uh, you know, um, ask the chairs to give it a hearing and have some success. What is significant about this bill to a lot of people here is that what it does not include, the assault ban, uh, universal background checks, uh, ammunition restrictions. Well, talk to us about that and why this one is better and is it simply because it can get through? Well, um, this bill was put together with the intent of seeing what we could do with the current system that we have to make that better and to focus on the criminals. And so what could we do in a bipartisan fashion with geographic balance to say to the legislature, we're serious about working on this issue? How bipartisan is this? It seems to be creating a lot of division. Well, actually, this is very bipartisan, and if you look at the authors, there are 70, more than 70 authors on the bill, and one of the copies, you'll see that every other line is Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican. Is this the bill that passes this year? Um, well, we hope so. Well, talk to me about the votes. Well, um, one of the things that uh, we have been working very hard on is getting members from the House um, and the Senate uh, to stand together and say these are the things that we think we can support in a broad bipartisan way. And so um, we have all of these folks who've signed on these bills to say we want to work to solve real problems in a bipartisan fashion. Do you have a sponsor of the Senate yet? Um, well, there are senators here, and I think there is some discussion about which one of them is going to author it. Where are the police chiefs? Association, are they on board with us? Or? Well, um, we've been uh, we invited everyone to come, and these are the folks that have come today. So um, I, I think you'd have to ask them. So do we have two bills: one sponsored by a sheriff, and one with, supported by sheriffs, and one sponsored by police. Now, I think that there's a lot of um, room for folks to look at uh, where law enforcement stands on the issues, and I think that what you've seen here is that uh, these law enforcement agencies have decided that they want to focus on the current background system that we have, and how do we fill the gaps with what ex currently exists? Well, Seventy percent of Minnesotans, according to the Minnesota poll, support universal background checks. Why can't that get through? 
Well, each and every member of the Minnesota House and the Minnesota Senate has their own vote, and they will be deciding where they're going to stand on those issues. The folks that are standing up here today are saying that this is a proposal they can support. Representative Hornet. Someone else talked about that. Representative Hornet. Uh, it's a good question about the 70 percent. <clears throat> you will notice when that question was asked, there was no description uh, of the bill. When that 70 percent question was asked, there was nothing in there about the possibility of a statewide registration system, the possibility of the $25 fee and other things. So, you know, if the question was asked, it could have been different. But we're not here to argue that. It's how each legislator feels in their own district and make up their own mind and answer to their constituents. Don't believe Minnesota support universal background checks. Well, I just believe in, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, the question is where legislators are. Mm -hmm. So is this just acknowledging a political reality of the current Minnesota legislature? Um, this is an attempt to solve real problems for Minnesotans. Representative Hillstrom, uh, Chairman Paymar told me yesterday there's no way he's holding a hearing on this bill. So how are you going to get this bill out of the committee and get it to the House floor? Well, uh, first we have to get a bill introduced, right? You have to have a House author, you have to have a Senate author, and then the, uh, the discussions begin, right? Each and every member can go to any chairman um, and ask for a hearing. There are many opportunities for folks to have their voices heard. Uh, I'm looking to get a hearing. If the chair of the, of the House Committee will not hear the bill, how do you get a hearing or is there some other mechanism to advance the bill? You know, um, one of the things that I think we need to do is figure out how we can solve problems here. And so, of course, um, I have been in conversations with Representative Paymar. I am certain others have been in conversations as well. Um, hopefully we can come up with a bipartisan solution that we can all get behind. Time for one more. Uh, the Senate the Judiciary Chair Ron Latz has been working on this, says he hasn't heard anything about this bill and, and doesn't support one without universal background checks. How do you, I guess, reconcile that difference? Um, well, I have not spoken personally with uh, Senator Latz, so I really can't comment on what he says. I, I just haven't spoken to him yet. Okay, how do you move a bill in the Senate? Do, I mean, do you have a sponsor to move a separate bill? Or? Well, there are senators that are here, and so the senators, of course, will be uh, figuring that out amongst themselves. The, the first goal was to figure out if you could come up with a proposal that people bipartisanly could support, right? And that's what we've done here today. It's a real problem-solving bill that deals with the issues of current background checks right now as, deal, as well as dealing with criminals. Um, while respecting the Second Amendment right. And we believe that uh, this is one of the ways to bring people together on this issue. Do any Democrats in the Senate support this? I see some Republican senators. I don't see any Democrats. Oh, I thought there was one here a little bit ago. I thought there was one here earlier. So tell us who that I'm is just so not sure. Talk to them? So um, there was one here earlier. I'm not sure where he went. Who, who is it? <coughs> so we could go talk to that individual. Well. <coughs> If he's not standing right here, I'm just going to. All right, thank you. Thanks. Good.